Hi guys, last day of GSA. Yes, last Woo. day of GSA. It's done. Kurt's already safely home. Mm. <laughs> what is home? Safe-ish home. He's probably working on lectures right now. He should just put on a um, long silence. Blue Planet to be video. Audio. I'm trying to think of the one that was about life. Planet Earth. No life. Um, <laughs> Life. Yeah, but life was about life. It's been a long week. Okay, a documentary. <laughs> yes, there was a documentary. Um, <coughs> so what did you see in the morning, Anna? Was there anything about cosplay? Was it yipping that she didn't like? <laughs> Take five. <laughs> uh, I went. That to... was not part of the talk. No, I went okay. to a talk about digital vouchers. And... Oh yeah. Oh god, that was a good talk. I think we could keep it. I think we can cut. I, we, uh, I don't know. Curtis fixed this. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with it? There was nothing wrong with it, but then we talked about religion and Brendan was like, we need to be careful about this, and so we stopped the video. You were doing it. Um, I know. And, um... Just, you have guest speakers in this, this GSA session, so we want to make everybody comfortable. Oh, yes, we do. We've had this before. Um... We can cut the video around it. I don't know, maybe not, but we can cut the audio around it. So, I mean, we can repeat what you said. You went to one of the education and outreach talks, and? Yes, and they were talking about digital vouchers. So they were talking about the My Fossil Project <clears throat> and how these um, amateur and public paleontologists are adding their collections to this e-database. And so the question was, if you have the locality information, you have good quality photos of these fossils, is that enough for them to count in peer-reviewed journals as, you know, a voucher for a fossil? And so the answer that they were arguing was yes. And so, it used, again, it's not that dissimilar from doing counts in the field. So I don't see a problem with that, but mm -hmm. you do need physical vouchers for, you know, holotypes. Yeah. And, but yeah. So oh. you, you said they submitted a paper? Yeah, they had submitted a paper and I think they were fin they were finishing up their reviews and everything, so it went through the editor, I think. Mm -hmm. so. Cool. Yeah. Which talk would you like to talk about? We're all doing one. Oh, if we're all doing one? I don't know, is that the plan? Well, that seems Let's like a good all space doing saver. one and then see if yeah. If I only do one, I'm gonna do um, John Hendricks' talk okay. about the deal, the digital encyclopedia in ancient life. It's uh, available at the Digital Atlas of Ancient Life website, which you can Google and then you scroll down until you see a Zephastinus, which if you're not from or around Kansas is the scary looking toothy fish. It's a really grumpy looking one that looks like... Yeah. So Zephastinus is the equivalent of reaching the Yeti in Ski Free? Yeah. Sure. Mm. I don't you know, actually know that, that reference. I got one! <laughs> uh, and uh, obviously being online and available means this is something free so students like it because it doesn't cost as much and they don't have to lug around a big book and everything on it is available as teacher resource with a Creative Commons license instead of having mm. to deal with issues with copyrighted figures and such. And it frequently updates uh, they have models on it that were made by photogrammetry, which is when you take a ton of photos in a circle around something and then you use a computer to magically reconstruct what the, the 3D version of it is that's consistent with all of those photos, which either works really well or looks horrible, and so you know if you did it correctly or not. <laughs> Uh, it's results-based research. Yeah. No, no, no. It, people, it's just if it... Yeah, it, it usually works well. Um, and so there's a bunch of pretty things that you can see on the website that are, are models that you can rotate in 3D. Oh. Uh, I think I caught the end of that because they, they had labeled stuff on the models too, like the... Yeah. The so, suture lines and stuff. Okay. So the anatomical features labeled on 3D models of real fossils so that students could rotate them and mm -hmm. learn about the, the, the anatomy and could learn about um, various different taxa and so you can search them by region or by, cl by clade and you can 
lump all of them together and they're just adding and adding to them. They're up to like 250. Um, the goal for by now was 100, so it's going, it's going well. And, oh, and you can download the models, so if you wanted to 3D print yourself a Bellerophon or whatever, you could. Okay. <laughs> oh, and um, I, should, I should mention, uh, Emily Hoff has been doing the uh, actual photographing of all the specimens. Are you looking at me to speak? Mm -hmm. So, I... That's probably the most paleo talk I went to. Actually, might have been younger. But I went to Matt Downen's talk about spiders, and I wish I had the title of it, because um, that would be useful. Um, it was, he was talking about preservation. Preservational bias and spider Yes, 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 okay. <laughs> All right, so anyways, so the spiders have been preserved in amber, which have the best detail, or in lacustrine deposits, um, and this includes both web and ground spiders. Uh, the oldest spiders are from the Penn Permian time. And um, he had a list of various things. The ones I was able to catch were the, is it Crato? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Crato from the Cretaceous in Brazil, the Green River, Eocene from Colorado, the Florissant, Oligocene from Colorado, and I in Provence. I don't think I caught the time on that one. Um, in any case, the Crado is, oh no, this is mixed up. Um, any case. <laughs> the one by the fish, but not the fish. <laughs> I have like arrows going around to different things. Um, in any case, the overall question was, is lacustre and preservation similar everywhere? Was what I got is that. Um, and so the Crado had, I was surprised, I didn't realize this, that there were orb weavers in the Crado. Like, I don't know, I feel like my knowledge of very little, I don't know, orb weavers seem pretty fancy. But yeah, I know something about these things. <laughs> um, in any case, so yeah, that was kind of cool. Um, and then the Green River he mentioned, um, which I thought was interesting, he said they image best with fluorescent light that helps show, um, I guess they don't show up very well without the fluorescent light, um, and had a lot of small spiders. Um, there's also mention of the Kishinem formation, but I don't have any notes about that. Was that the one that he was looking into that he didn't, hadn't really sampled yet? Perhaps, maybe that's why I have no notes about it. <laughs> um, and then the fluorescent had wolf spiders, which I don't know, that was also mm -hmm. cool to see, because they see them now. There's actually a ton in my house right now, and I think there's something causing the boom, because I've taken three outside and my dad has stepped on one and they're probably still lying in the room. But in any case, uh, and then I in Provence, there is wolf and one that got cut off, but some ground dwellers. Um, the amber has more web spinning spiders, which makes sense because the trees have the sap and they you know, need to go up there versus a ground spider probably wouldn't be an amber. Um, in any case, he showed us all the various data, and in general, the lacustrine sediment or samples had no clear trend of web versus ground. Um, and yeah, so his original question of is lacustrine preservation similar everywhere is no, um, not preserved uniformly. Um, and then he had kind of further questions about whether that was caused by paleo environment or something else. Um, and then during question time, I thought this was interesting. So he kind of alluded to the fact that ground dwelling spiders were harder um, to get preserved in lacustrine sediments. Well, obviously also in the amber. But in any case, I guess he said in his experiments, he has tried in various ways to put ground dwelling spiders oh, yeah. in water and get them to sink. And he was like, it's near impossible. So that was interesting. <laughs> Why Is do they the float hair? so well? <laughs> huh? Is it the hair? Like wolf spiders I think it was are much partially, hairier. It might be partially the size, because he seemed to indicate that the web um, the web spiders, I think because they were smaller, could break the water tension more easily mm -hmm. than the big ones. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I kind of feel like, I don't know, at least wolf spiders in my mind, yeah, they seem kind of fluffy. Are wolf and spiders the ones that can hunt on water? There's one species that can yeah. raft. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not I sure. I believe. But there's, <clears throat> there's also actual water spiders that right. trap air in the hairs. And, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, for me, not knowing much about spiders, like I had heard of the Crado and obviously knew they were in amber, but it was kind of a nice review of all these different things. He did say when doing his experiments the first time that one of the problems was that the spiders would tend to try to swim. 
Is that the schwant <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. So I think even this, he was talking about dead spiders space. too. Like, yeah. So yeah. even yeah. if they can't, like, they're not mobile, oh, yeah. they were still bad. hard to sink. Like, why wouldn't you, like, sacrifice them in some other way first? Like, put them in a tank with all CO2 or nitrogen or something so that they don't swim and also you're not incredibly cruel. Oh, you mean, so it still has its life. So it has the, it's, it it's intact, body. it's intact, but wouldn't swim until it was exhausted and you're not doing those weird psychological studies with rats. Like, how long will the spider Aww. swim? Which ones were depressed beforehand? Which one? Aww. That's a real thing. The longer you swim, the, the, the less depressed you are if you're a I used a to have pet rats. They were very sweet. They lived inside your couch. One of them did. <laughs> One of them did. <laughs> she left quite a mid in there. <laughs> but now you have spiders. Yeah, God. <laughs> there, there's so many. One, no, one time I came home, I took a picture of it. There were four wolf spiders around the edge of the outside door. Like, so what I, you're saying is you're, you're like the early levels of an RPG? Yes. The rats and the spiders were not in the same building, FYI. The rats were in Kansas, where there were the brown recluse spiders, which were also awesome. Yeah. 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 No, last fall I think I saw one wolf spider. Now I've seen like a dozen this year, and I a need, lot of them I in the house. I need a couple wolf spiders because I have a lot of brown recluses. I. Uh, they're impossible. I I had when I had the cat that do permanently decreased the number of brown recluses in my house. <laughs> um, but I did once leave a frying pan out with oil in it, and when I got up in the morning, there was a brown recluse drowned in the oil. So they sink in oil. So they sink yeah. in oil. So this yeah. is. <laughs> Flakes were made of oil. I also kept one for months. Didn't feed it. It was fine. And then it yeah, came. I have it in a jar. And the, yeah, they, the animal just shrinks up, and then occasionally I catch flies, and then I just put it in, and it eat it and swell up. Okay, so I'm gonna transfer out of Kansas because I don't like this anymore. I found one of my bed ones, and I never died. Matt Downer got bitten by one. Did he really? Yeah. Well, he got bitten by oh. a spider, and they had to biopsy the resulting. Because they thought it was brown. Yeah. Jeez. So, messed him up for a little while. It was in space. Oh. So. Goodness. Um, so did you see any talks, James? So, <laughs> the one talk, if we're only doing one talk, I think I'll talk about is Ashley Janine's talk on the Mesozoic Marine Resolution, looking for drivers in, your, in reptiles. Um, and basically it was looking at um, food webs and, well, Yes, sort of food chains, but it was looking at basically um, ecological or like functional diversity and um, uh, well diversity of food chains and, and diversity in like number of species. And basically, um, she was looking at a number of things, but one of the things that basically the, the, the basic thesis was was that um, if you see this big exponential increase in um, like the number of species, we expect that you'll get this increase in diversity um, and you'll get an increase in the number of food chains so basically the like number of interactions um, or the number of like units of food chains so, like uh, predator prey like producer interactions is going to go up there'll be more of them but you'll get decreasing connectivity between them so you get more and more isolated individual ones so you're not going to have like one that is everything's interconnected in some way um, and that you expect new sp the number of new species should outstrip the number of new functional guilds. And so functional guilds are just um, units of animals or organisms that do the same basic thing. So as far as we're concerned, like rabbits and beavers and sheep, maybe, are like all the same thing. Oh. And um, then predators like um, people and wolves and bears are basically identical um, and things like that. Um, and so she's looking at the Middle Triassic, Middle Jurassic, and Lower Cretaceous, and looking at um, guilds in each of those. And uh, basically, uh, they were creating guild-level food webs, but we can't actually prove interactions, so they were signing everything to a guild. And they're using a computer program to basically randomly create food webs that would link things within that guild, and they'd do that like lots of times every time to get a distribution of potential interactions in these guild systems. Um, 
and uh, they would use the PBDB and collections of the literature to, to generate these guilds for each time period. Um, and so you'd get a number of possible food webs over each of these time periods for everything. And in the middle Triassic, they had 1,185 species with 105 guilds. Um, this is the only time that we're told this, but there was about 18,000 possible interactions within like that space. In the middle Jurassic, there are 1,363 species and 117 guilds, and in the lower Cretaceous, 1,457 species and 105 guilds. And so basically, um, what you are seeing was that diversity was going up consistently, and the number of guilds went up and then decreased. So the number of guilds peaked in the Jurassic, but you weren't getting the same guilds before and after. So even though uh, guild levels increased and then decreased back down to less to the levels they were in the Triassic, the guilds that were there were different to the guilds that had been there in the Triassic. Um, so you added new guilds before you <coughs> took away yeah. a different subsampling of them. Yeah, and there was a significant decrease in interactions in the Jurassic and then an increase in the Cretaceous and a decrease in connectivity throughout the Mesozoic, but it mainly dropped from the Triassic to the Jurassic. Um, and there was a different a decrease in food chain length through time. So food chain length is just the number of things that are like getting the energy passed to them. So you might have a producer and then a grazer, and that's a food chain length of one. But if it's a producer and a grazer, and the predator, it's a food chain length of two. And if you sort of then add a predator to the predator, it'll be three and so on. So food chain length was decreasing through time. So it, the average food chain length went from 1.85 to 1.67 to 1.53. Um, and also the number of paths um, should go up with the number of species. And so, like, if you've got one producer, you could have one grazer and one predator, and that's one path, but you could have another grazer and another predator, and that'd be two paths. Uh, and so you'd expect the number of paths to go up with the number of species, but in fact, you've got the opposite, the number of path lengths. The number of path and the length was going down in the Jurassic to the Jurassic, and then throughout the Mesozoic as well. Um, <clears throat> so basically, um, the paths get smaller and fewer, so these things are getting less complex and more sort of self-contained, and there were fewer interactions going on. Um, uh, and basically, the mean network of the trophic position is increasing and decreasing. And so, basically, when you split it up based off carnivores and omnivores, what you're seeing is that carnivores were getting shorter chain lengths. So carnivores are basically eating things that were grazing things, but omnivores were then increasing them. So omniv the, basically there were omnivores were like eating other omnivores more. Um, and basically in the Pythonian, uh, guilds were like losing prey. So omnivores were losing prey with short chains and carnivores were losing prey with long chains. And so the, like the way these interactions were breaking down was different whether you're an omnivore or a carnivore. Um, and so basically the main thing that came out of it was that um, functional diversity increased much slower than taxonomic diversity did, which is what you'd expect. Um, and the Mesozoic Marine Revolution peaked in the Jurassic, and the decreases in the Cretaceous, but did not return to pre-existing conditions. So the entire environment and the way these systems were interacting had changed. Um, um, and basically the way food webs are changing was you had it was much more species rich um, and there were many more different sort of food chains but there were fewer interactions and so these chains were getting more simple through time and so that's basically what that was saying Ooh. yeah does anyone have anything else they want to talk about we've got a few minutes there's the turritella one carly's talk yeah that was a cool talk Jurassic to recent Toratelli gastropods. She just talk about it and then like do a video editing, just like bleep the stuff out. <laughs> what? Um, it will just beep. Same rule as usual. I'm on the paper, so you guys talk. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> is there a passive or selectively driven trend in body size? And they're looking at New Zealand for the modern stuff. They're looking at latitude, temperature and chlorophyll. I didn't understand the chlorophyll. A food source, they're, I imagine? Um, or oh. They're filter feeders, so... They're eating chlorophyll? The idea... You look at chlorophyll from space, because it has a color, so you can figure out an estimate of the algal productivity oh, okay. 
and so you, you use what that is in the grid space. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't quite understand that. Okay. And there are four modern species that were looked at, and in terms of uh, the three things, latitude, temperature, and chlorophyll, there were no driven trends at all in temperature or chlorophyll, but there was a size increase with latitude. But when you look at the four species individually, one species was decreasing in size of latitude, another species didn't care, two were going up, so those two species were driving the overall trend. And so that was sort of like the first part. And then it was expanding out and looking at the fossil record, and using holotypes versus species, and so rather than have to try to work out the average size or the median size or the mean size or whatever for a species, we were using holotypes, and the interesting thing is that holotypes, this is fascinating, this is, this is an entire sort of thing in its own right, holotypes on average tend to be way larger than the average members of the species. Yeah, the yes. goal is to get the largest, the largest, and so, well, there's some literature that holotypes in general are larger, so then we looked at 18 species and compared the holotype with a ton of them in the collections to show that, you know, 16 out of 18 times or something like that, it is larger. Really? Is uh, that just like a Because uh, you want, thing, like or? among other things, they break, so you want the longest one, you take the longest, prettiest one to be your holotype, and you've gone and you've picked up 50 of them, and you want to name the new species, you pick the nice one. I wonder I if that holds you can true see it better too. I wonder if that holds true for other stuff. It yeah. does. There's yeah. other literature, I don't yeah. remember on any of it off the top of my I head. I mean, the other thing as well is well, if, I'm gonna ask you for that literature later. if things are larger, like details are probably more clearer. Right. Yeah. And things like that. And yeah. also it worked for Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> and we're also we're also like attracted to like the most obvious thing. Right. So, yeah. Um, and so they had four hundred and twenty eight holotypes, which by extension means they had four hundred and twenty eight species. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's usually your goal with holotypes. Yeah. And then I was just starting to, like, Carly has so much stuff that I was trying to, like, to generate the shorthand. And so overall, mean size stayed the same. Max size, up one. Min size, down two. <laughs> and so minimum size was, like, significantly going, like, through, through time? Yeah, through yeah. time. Yeah. And maximum size was, like, a little bit. What and was it going like? <laughs> I understood that sound effect. Yeah. Um, but then if you looked at just the Jurassic Cretaceous, the mean size is going down a bit, the max didn't change, and the min did go down. And then in the Cenozoic, everything is like just carrying on, it's fine. And so the interesting thing was then that there is this, the, 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 if you're categorizing the trends based off various models, you've got this unbiased random walk in the Mesozoic, and then it shifts to like stasis in the early Paleogene and just sits there. Um, and then all of the trends, there are none of them. So there's no latitudinal trend, no trends in other proxies, no evidence for Cope's rule, which means that minimum and maximum size both have to go up. Mm. They're clearly not doing that because overall things seem to want to get smaller a bit more than they want to get bigger. Um, and then the question came down to why the modern latitudinal change. And it's like, maybe it's a... Uh, I can't read this. You're going to talk about the, the, the people. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, oh yeah, like food or that sort of thing, or like human activity. And so we've been cleaning up the bays, and that's made them less good for turtles because <laughs> we're not dumping sewage into there anymore. Um, so I liked that. That was good. Um, but then basically, it came down to maybe scale matters. There's no overall global trend, but there are regional trends where you're there are distinctive trends with latitude that are visible, but they do not carry across globally. So that's also very cool. So there's multiple layers of like four or five very cool things that were coming out of this. So, do you have anything to add? Um, I just had, yeah, no global trends with bivalves, but lifespan increases with low latitude and the growth rate slows with low latitude. Is that temperature? Oh no, it's the opposite of temperature. That's about bivalves. Yeah, yeah, that was still about bivalves. That's from David Boss's stuff. Yes. I was just adding that as a thing, like, comparatively. To yeah, we, we originally started doing growth rate as well, and then that got out of hand, and so now that's a different paper. <laughs> and then she Parish finished... cannot be contained. <laughs> <laughs> they want to be everywhere. 
Because um, they are everywhere. Yes, gastropods are everywhere. Especially when there's poop. <sighs> well, it's not just... It's not just the nutrients. <laughs> it's, it's also that 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 cloudy water it becomes finer grains. Yeah. So I want to know if tomatoes would do very very well in the Great Lakes. That's so no, mean. because so they're fresh, so they die. Species. Yeah. This this even muscle they are an invasive species <laughs> in Australia. The New Zealand Maricolpus, that is exactly the ones that you're talking about now with the sewage. Mm -hmm. They are invasive in Australia, and they're bad for the local Turritella. Oh. The Turritella don't play nice with one another. No, they don't, except Australia, they all seem to get along. Like, a third of the diversity is between Tasmania and Southeast Australia. Huh. And then, yeah, she kind of finished with the, there's benefits and negatives to related to size. Mm. Yeah, the pros and the cons, and she luckily sent all the pros to the wrong person. No. Oh. <laughs> I don't of, understand. There was a list of pros saying. and cons. Yeah. And she accidentally sent the He's list. He's making a personal reference. Yeah. Are you, you saying I'm bad? No. no. Well, I'm, it's fine. something you said at dinner. Yeah. About sending the list of pros to someone. Never mind. It's your own life history. Yeah. <laughs> and since you it's clearly gone. don't recall, it's gone now. you shouldn't be on the podcast. Right, right the list of pros and cons. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, what are you. Uh, <coughs> I thought she was saying like the fat gastropods weren't good and that was mean or something. Fat gastropods? I don't know. They can't move as fast or whatever. <laughs> they can't, but they're sessile. But they can make better. Whatever. That was a, that was a thing. I One understand of the things was, that. If you're bigger, wait, wait, you what? can have a larger brain. That appears in the literature. Oh, but yeah, that... Carly very specifically said, you know, if that matters in your taxon, because <laughs> it's it's. It's a snail that lays on its back all day. <laughs> she didn't say that. That's I'm saying that as someone who works on these. So it's having right. a larger brain doesn't necessarily help you if you go zero miles an hour in a in funnel in suspension theater. <coughs> I mean, Pyvels don't even really have one. So. <coughs> I'm sorry. Don't die, James. You have to live through December. Also, in general, I think... Larger gastropods can carry more weight than smaller ones. <laughs> Based on your own your own research? Yeah, that was like Rosales, 1998. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been published, really. <laughs> so it's anecdote. You yeah. should put it on BioArchive. You should. Is that a... Th okay. Yeah. I have to find it. I'm Like, I didn't throw it away. It was pretty nice. Scan it and put it up. Just see what <laughs> comments you get. Can I like can I pin it to like the poster section? <laughs> My trifold. Actually, I would like hopefully I could get a table so it can be in its trifold. State. There's a little table in front of most yeah. posters now, so yeah. yeah, you could do that. <laughs> oh dear. Cool. Anything I'm else? impressed that you think that you would still have it. I, yeah. You're a good archivist. I don't know if it's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's that's GSA. Yeah. Twenty eighteen. That's a wrap. It's done. You live. Next year's NXT Phoenix. coming up. Oh yeah. When's that? It's in June. Oh my god. Of twenty nineteen. I might not be in the country. Where are you going? Maybe China. Maybe Scotland. Hmm. Maybe Canada. Who knows? <gasps> You're even really avoiding California. Like I'll be anywhere. <laughs> Oh, do you know what? If I was in Canada and came back by California, I'm already fucked in terms of time zones, but it could be worse. Where's Ontario? That's Ontario? central time? Uh, yeah. Ish, yeah. I think. yeah. Where's China? <laughs> <laughs> On the other side On of their the world. Time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll the see. The same time, almost, but you On the other AM, side. PM. <laughs> yeah. You hungry? No, it's not. It's <laughs> because <laughs> you ate nothing, so. I ate a lot. Do you eat food? Thank you. Mm. <laughs> you and I both ate half of our pasta, and they're only commenting on on you. Yeah, I so. know. I didn't notice, Brandon. So. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's who she asked for a box first. For. She asked you if you wanted a box. And then she made various then, comments. Yeah. <laughs>
that you ate like a bird. Yeah. I don't know. If she's seen birds eat, they're greedy little fuckers. <laughs> I wish if that's a regional thing. My mom used to say I had to eat, like, when I was, like, a child, I probably looked not healthy because I was super thin. People say eat like a bird all over. Yeah. But yeah. it doesn't yeah. make sense because no. they don't. Because they don't eat everything. They eat. <laughs> yeah. don't say eat like a cat. Especially when Amanda's cat because it eats so quickly it swallows air. <laughs> I hear it go, oh. Like, it's, he it's bad. He was so, or is, I don't know. Yeah, he's bad. Yeah, he was just horrible. <laughs> then it'd be like, because he had so much air in him. So oh, man, this cat has made it onto the failure after dark, oh. even without being present. Even without, yeah. He's often not present. He's not with Amanda always. No, Amanda is. He's there. He's just not emotionally present. Mm. I don't think any cat is ever emotionally <laughs> present. <laughs> no. And then close this one is. Mm. Like, oh, he's happy. I'm like, no, you're just warm. That's so mean. Well, I mean, he's happy, but he doesn't love you. <laughs> <laughs> My dogs love me. But your dogs. The dog. Eat each other. Eat each other? But eat each other. No. Hey, I, I thought you got two dogs so they'd be happy, and then the girl bullied the boy. I mean, she well, one claims of them has to win. sovereignty. She's not mean though. Did you, no, with did him. you have to put him in a crate because she bullies him at night? No. Okay, are you sure? Yeah. Uh, someone sure. else. My parents' dog is not friendly to them. Your, your dog that they named after the old dog? No. That's identical? No. I thought they. Her name is Burgess, but not like the shale. Oh. But I thought oh, the old I, one was. Where called, else does it come from? I thought the old dog it's was. It's spelled called, bird, like as in the flying animal, and then Jess, like Jessica. My friend on Facebook. Um, oh yeah! yeah! Oh my god! Yeah. She's your friend on Facebook! How can you forget? Yeah, Jeez. but wasn't the old one also called Burgess? No, the old one's name is Squatch. <laughs> okay, but it looks the same. It's the same type of dog, yes. Yeah, I thought it was called... Did they just change the name of the Facebook account? No! Well, I mean, yes, but now the pictures... <laughs> now the pictures are the new dog. <laughs> Wow. And it says like that it is a new dog. Like it's what not about, claiming to be the old. It's not just a continuation. the old dog and starting a new Facebook account. Like if you had a kid. Oh like, no! Whoa! Well, what do you have to do when there's like in memoriam of? Yeah, you can memorialize Squash the dog. FYI, you can friend Burgess Rosales on Facebook. She's got like a thousand friends. <laughs> She doesn't post much, though. No, which I'm thankful for. <laughs> I'm going to make her post more just in case. So, Amanda, if you want to create a Facebook page for your cat, we could make one for Curtis. No, no we let's could. not make one no, we for should. Curtis. No, because... He needs a social media presence. Oh, she has 938 friends. 14 of which are mutual with me. Does Curtis have, like, a LinkedIn or anything? James does. Yeah. Curtis now has a research gate. Yeah. All right, we'll get that. I, I don't dragged idea. him into. No one wants LinkedIn. Yeah. What? I've got LinkedIn. It's awful. I I said you did stuff. So I'm told. Oh, you. did you? Yeah. I go on LinkedIn. And you supported me for if, chocolate, I think. If the paper is <laughs> yeah, published, I did. We have it on LinkedIn. Chocolate. That's it. Are we not connected on LinkedIn? Are we not? <laughs> Look, well, I could. Are you on research gate? I think I am. I have, I think I set one up, but I need to like sign back into it because I like can't forget. Yeah. So I, that's it's a good source for new papers to come out. I have RSS feeds, and I just go, oh, I'll read this paper at some point, and I just save it. Yeah. Have any of you been getting like spam invites to refer hire? No. no. I've gotten like all these random things to join refer hire, but they're from like IT people. You mm. live in like Silicon Valley, and it's like, yeah, I don't think we need to connect. <laughs> Sometimes they just do that to like everyone from a school. It's like it's your graduation time, so we'll email every person. Oh well, no, I have no like none of these names or anyone I know. Okay. Ever. Then don't talk to them. Yeah. No, I don't plan to. I just was curious if others <clears throat> were getting harassed by refer hire. I really like the people that I don't know that wish me a happy birthday on LinkedIn and ResearchGate every year. You Wait, can have your birthday have on you the birthday? I've never gotten a, a birthday message on ResearchGate. I didn't maybe know you could it's, your birthday. No, maybe it's just LinkedIn. 
Lincoln does that. Yeah. Which is just a little too social for a, like, yeah. It also Actual asks you aim. if you're uh, married or single, which I'm pretty sure. Which site does? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Does asks, it really? Yeah. It asks you that, but you can't ask someone that when you're hiring them for a job. So it should be on a searchable yeah. thing. Well, but it's, I mean, it's voluntary by the people. It's voluntary disclosure, but uh, you don't want to disclose any information. Somebody tried to get me to apply for a job at Goldman Sachs on <laughs> LinkedIn. <laughs> They're like, oh, we're hiring and we're recruiting scientists to R&D. And I'm like, mm. Mm. When I graduated, the, the FBI sent me yeah, an email. I like, we're looking for people with experience teaching. Oh. I'm I saw more, like, things about STEM. They always showed up in, like, yeah, the it, adverts. It was in, they wanted STEM and they wanted teaching, and I got a, a message from them. I never got anything like that. It's like, I bet you have a height requirement. They, ha I, they actually, they have an app now, the FBI fitness test, so you can see if you can... I'm <laughs> sure that I can't. The <laughs> FBI. I, I let the whole, it's like, something was going to give last year PhD, and for me it was health. Don't do that, but make I, your own decisions. I, I lost <laughs> a lot of weight in the last year of my PhD because Amanda made I found me go it. to the gym. <laughs> yeah, no, she always killed me. It's just like, we're going to do 45 minutes, and also, you're not going to eat lunch today. <laughs> so. I'm glad that made you happy. Um. <clears throat> Breathe. <laughs> no, but seriously, take, take that information off LinkedIn before you look for jobs, because my wife had weird experiences. Oh, weird. Well, yeah, I don't think I saw that well, option, but, yeah. I put the minimum amount of information. It probably assumes you're single, then. Um. I guess that's it. Yeah, a nice patch of silence in the audio podcast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Made it through another year. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> I would like to promote the Salem limestone, which is the Mississippian limestone, which is like the best limestone in the world. And like every building is made out of it, like the Pentagon and the Empire State Building and the Indiana State Capitol, as well as many other state capitals. And it is full of things, including gastropods. I like that the mall is made of rudists. <laughs> if you walk, walk through the mall here, you can look down, it's all rudists. No, it's not all Buddhists, but there's a lot of Buddhists. <laughs> Solid Buddhist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this was a nice day. It was nice yeah. and quiet. Because yeah. Curtis wasn't here. No. <laughs> and we didn't get much to hear much from him because his computer was broken, so... Mm -hmm. R.I.P. Curtis's computer. Yep. Something, Again. something to 2018. I mean, it was Frankenstein. It's like 2000... 12 or 2011 to 2018 and it was a Frankenstein monster of a computer that had been resurrected twice. Well at least he didn't make his senile like someone did. I didn't make it senile, it just <laughs> went senile, okay? And then I cloned it onto my new one and it immediately became senile. I made an exact copy of this thing that doesn't work and now it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lesson for any of you writing new R code today. <laughs> uh, the funny thing was that um, my... so. Occasionally, my computer, when it would when it got seen, I would go, oh, "You really like this file?" And it would open that file every time it booted up for no fucking reason. Oh, it just wanted to make you happy, James. It saw you liked it, so it's like I give you this. But now Windows 10 just does that anyway. So like, I'll close everything down, and it'll still open up the last thing I had open. So sometimes I turn on my computer and just open up PowerPoint. That's because it's trying to deal with the fact that now it closes things and restarts against your will. So it's like, I'll I'll bring this back. Yeah, it didn't save your work, but I brought it back. It's like, it's like, <laughs> like the dog that brings back a different stick. <laughs> We're playing the game by changing the object. Oh. It's like, no, the reason I didn't want you to restart is because this analysis was supposed to take 30 hours. Um, the, but the thing is as well now is things like Skype, because it's all done on cloud stuff, <laughs> never turns off. So Skype always says I'm online. Mm-hmm. 
And you, so people message me, and then I'm like, yeah, no, I was not, like... But doesn't it say that you're, like, away, or... I don't know what it says, yeah. but either that or some of my people are just not that bright and don't read, but... It puts a little dot next to you if you're actually there, or, yeah. or you can say away. Well, the other thing is that I will log out of everything on my phone, uh, including Gchat, and I'll be driving for a long time, and Amanda and Curtis stop fucking messaging, like... The funniest thing that they do is say, okay, I'm going to do a group chat, which is all three of us, and then I'm not taking part in this group chat, and they're fucking just pissing their brains out at each other with their stupid fucking thoughts that they just put unfiltered as they talk to each other. I'm like, just fuck off and shut up, because I'm doing something else. But it's like, bing, 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 and I'm like, I don't, 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 don't care. Wait, are you using, like, group me? No, it's chat. <laughs> Oh, I have no idea how you use that. Uh, but, like, in GroupMe, you can, like, mute certain conversations so you don't get the I don't know what GroupMe is. It's probably the same difference. You can probably mute conversations. Not if I'm driving. Okay. You like, Curtis your started to... Like, before you go. Yeah. Curtis, no, I can't, because I, I can put Anxiety. my phone on silent. I can put my phone on silent, but that's all I can do. Curtis, um, last time I was driving back from Tennessee, started sending me pictures of fucking Super Saiyan goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> A what? Goldfish? Super yeah, Saiyan goldfish. How could you how could you not like that? <laughs> so it's for the podcast, back when it was a Dragon Ball podcast. <sighs> so yeah, we got this done. Whoa, James. That's exactly what Artie Miller did at <laughs> he's, he's, he yelled out and then now you're president. And uh, I, I think that I was supposed to close the meeting, but I gambled out, so. <laughs> so. I think I took the pretty suits. Yes. And the different colors for different days? Yeah. The first day was, uh, I think this was called like Midnight Violet or something. Mm -hmm. That's pretty. And then I switched to this aqua, I think it's Bahama Blue. It's also nice. And then I switched to pink. It's it Bahamas pink? job that emailed out again because I guess they're not getting enough applicants. I will well, go to Bahamas. Oh. It's a Bahamas uh, marine bio job. <gasps> I'm probably not qualified. By the time this goes up, it'll probably not be accepting anymore. <coughs> All right. <coughs> So, well, congrats everyone. Whatever. Yeah, I still I think it should end with you throwing the paper, and that that should be the yeah. the cross. I can. I mean, no. oh, we can. I think we had to my notebook. <laughs> I was like, no. What you mean this notebook? <gasps> James, you took it. Why did you do that? This is mine. Okay, well that's caught on camera, so that's the end of my career. <laughs> Say Here. bye, everyone. You, you, you briefly stole a notebook. <laughs> bye. <laughs>